Some people say that Amazon is saturated, which I believe is complete and utter nonsense. However, there are certain products and certain types of products that are saturated. And in this video, I'm going to give you a number of products you should not be selling, not sh you should not be researching even. Why? Because they are actually saturated. First things first, before I give you any of these products, please do give us a like in this video. Jump down below and smash it with your mouse or whatever you can possibly do. Please do give us a like, it really, really helps the channel. And with that said, I am gonna get into the first product right now and jump over to Amazon to do that. So we're at product number one, and it is the Humble Dog Bed, and also dog cages as well. Uh, these are products that you absolutely should not be selling, and there's a number of reasons. The first one is whenever we search dog beds, Obviously, our number of results is well over a thousand. So, as you know, we like to see that number ideally in like, you know, 622 or something like that for the keyword. Also, dog beds is a very short tail keyword, which means that that title is going to be in a lot of different listings. That said, though, we know from scrolling down here and looking at these products, that this is just way too competitive. So, as we scroll down, the big problem is it's a very subjective market. There's lots of different types of dog beds, right? I remember looking at these products with Robert years ago, this little elevated thing here. And yeah, for a time, it made a lot of sense to sell that. But as time has gone on, what people have tried to do is to niche within a niche in dog beds. So for example, you have these smaller foam beds for a, a particular type of dog as well. Um, I actually don't know anything about dogs. I'm terrible. But as we scroll down anyway, you see you got bigger ones. You got ones with the little bones on them, right? You've got these kind of memory foam ones. You've got flat ones that are, some of them are memory foam, some are not. You've got ones for small dogs, more fluffy ones like this. I mean, it just goes on and on. It's really hard. You even have these types of ones that are almost like a, a couch now. So what's happened is that people began selling a very simple product and then it became really popular. So everyone started buying dog beds. You've probably done it. My, my family have definitely done it. I've seen my parents buy them and all of that. And then as time has gone on, people started to niche down so that you could kind of take some of the sales within the dog bed market for a particular type of dog. And whenever you see that, you know you're on to a really bad track whenever you have so many different types. Because here's the thing, there's loads of demand. Look, 479, 677, 61, 453. It's, it, dog beds are like some of the biggest sellers inside the pet category. And that's great and all, but at the end of the day, way too competitive, also way too subjective. Like which one would you sell? And you might get into something where you're thinking orthopedic dog bed, right? So you could even do that, right? I'll just show you that. Orthopedic dog bed. So we search that and now 794. So you might think that's good, but then when you scroll down, what's the problem? Way too subjective. It's like, which one would I do of the orthopedic ones, right? Would I do this type of one right here? Well then, what? how would I even describe that? It's a plush orthopedic sofa for a dog. And it actually, you might say it's a, I don't know what you describe this as, some like chaise long type thing, uh, but it's, it's just not something you're gonna wanna do. So dog beds and also dog cages, I'll just search that really quickly. Uh, they're at 2892 for dog cages, which actually, again, you might say is somewhat interesting, but the problem here again is different types of dog cages, different sizes. And again, when you see something that's number 10, you just know a lot of people are jumping into that market and trying to compete. So I would keep away from anything to do with dog beds or dog cages. Let's move on to number two. Okay, so the second product, we're still in that pet category now, and we're gonna talk about grooming brushes, typically for dogs. Uh, I believe they're only really for dogs, but anyway, we'll search it. So there's nail as well, nail, nail products for, for pets. I would avoid also, let's just start with a dog grooming product. Now there's lots of different types. I'll go back a step. There's lots of different types of products here. All of these pretty much are gonna be out. Maybe the table, we will look at that. So 387 for dog grooming table, that one could be in. That is one that could be in. And as I look at it, look, it's not as competitive as the other ones. Again, I'd have to do more research on it, but that one you may do, but all these other products, like, you know, table, uh, sorry, scissors, kits, all of that, and especially these brushes, you gotta keep away. Now I see people still recommending these products all the time. There's way, way, way too many products 
like this on Amazon, it is saturated, I would say at this point. Really, it's just standing out. Like, what the hell would you do with something like this? The only way to build this kind of a product and be successful would be number one, to happen to stumble upon some sort of pet grooming brush that's never been released before. It's probably more like one of these uh, gloves or whatever, and it's just something that's never been out there, and you're able to somehow get ranked on Amazon for that, which is unlikely. And the second way to go about a product like this would be you would have to have your own platform outside of Amazon and be sending a lot of people back to Amazon in order to buy these. So for example, if you had like an Instagram page that was to do with dogs and you had a big distribution channel of people over on an email list, then you might actually be able to be able to succeed with something like this. But for you and I, following the methodology that we follow where we're not doing that kind of thing, we're not sending traffic from outside of Amazon to our listings, we're looking to leverage what's on Amazon, this is not gonna be a product that's gonna be successful for you. Also, you're gonna run into a lot of issues as well. Some of these companies, I again, I'd have to research this further, but some of these companies will have protected the design in a design patent and that kind of thing. So you're gonna run into legal issues as well as everything else. And also just a big thing is subjective nature of the market too. It's very very confused, as we would say at Marketplace Superheroes. So keep away from all dog grooming brushes and also dog grooming kits as well. Again, lots of like just so hard. And also they're obviously electronic and things like that and they're powered, which is something we do keep away from. And lots of demand, no doubt, but terrible products. Please do not sell any of these. You want to instead try to segue off of these products. So again, just to show you what I mean by that dog grooming table, what we'd actually want to do is click into one of these and we may not get any segues off of this. I just want to try to show you a quick version of what we might do. And he's wearing a Santa hat, God bless him. So we scroll down. <laughs> and again, these are a good price point, $119. Much better price points than the other products we were looking at. But as we scroll down, sponsor products related to these items, and we would just go across these and start looking down. So again, look, we've got this type of a product. We might look at that one. That could be interesting. And on we go. So I'm not saying like, you know, the pet category is bad. That's definitely not true. I'm just saying there's certain products you want to avoid but you will want to segue off some of these like I just talked about. And typically when you know you're on the right track with a segue where you're going to see different types of products down here is when the BSR, the best seller rank, is a bit high on the higher side. Uh, typically I see that. I'm not always saying that or guarantee, guaranteeing that. Typically that's what we're seeing here. Anyway, let's get on to the next product. The next product are yoga mats. And for that matter, I'll give you a bonus, yoga blocks as well. As we search yoga mats, we can see lots of results. Again, it's completely out. Also very, very, very short tail, which isn't ideal for us either. Uh, as we scroll down again, what would you do with this? There's black colored ones, there's blue, there's different designs. It's very, very difficult. Yet again, a yoga mat type product from my vantage point, this type of thing where, let's say I've got a good buddy, a guy called Chris, and he runs a yoga channel channel over on YouTube called Yoga with Adrian. It's one of the biggest yoga channels in the world. Now, if I was Chris, I would get in my own line of yoga mats for sure. And I would sell them to my distribution list like we talked about. So on YouTube, I could do a video and talk about the yoga mat that we just brought in. That would be successful. And if you put it on Amazon, that would be successful because you have the ability to divert a whole bunch of people to a particular product. But in our case, we just can't do that. We're not going to be able to do it. It's just going to be an absolute nightmare. So please do not sell yoga mats and also don't say yoga blocks which i'll just search for you so you know what they look like in case you've never looked at them before uh there's these types of products here they literally look like little blocks and you use them for if you're not quite flexible enough when you're doing yoga and things like that so these are all ones to keep well away from there's lots of demand in this category yet again but it's just something that we can't do we would need to have a distribution channel and if somehow you could get access to one of those distribution channels with an email list where you can send a whole bunch of people to something, then yeah, you might look at it. But the chances of that are very slim because it's not the methodology we're using on Marketplace Superheroes. Let's go on to the next product. Now, before we do that, I wanna just check in and say, I would love for you to jump down below. Number one, give this video a like. And number two, let me know what's another product that you've come across that you believe and you've seen is just absolutely saturated. What have you seen where it has just tons of results? You can't jump in there. Let me know down below in the comments and I'll pick a winner. I'll send you something cool. All right, so the next product here are meal prep containers. 
please, 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 please keep well away from these. As we scroll down, we can see this this uh, company here, Freshware. They're the big company that are doing very, very well. I mean, this is absolutely killing us. I can't even imagine how many sales this is making every day. It's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. So, I mean, fair play to that company. They've been very successful and that's brilliant for them. But for you and I, this is a nightmare. As you can see, you're into these bento box style ones. You're into these more circular ones for like um, salads and things like that. You're into different sizes now because there's 22 two ounce ones, there's other sizes. It's a nightmare. Also, then you're into pack sizes again. So you're pack sizes of certain sizes and it's just a nightmare. As you can see, like if, it, I mean, years ago, you might've been able to get into this market, but nowadays it's just not possible. And also, you know, something is pretty saturated. Whenever you see here, Amazon basics are involved in that product. Now, again, that's not always the case, but typically Amazon basics is a, is a brand that Amazon obviously create and they create it whenever they see something that has a massive volume, humongous volume. And they think we'll get in, we'll do some of our own versions of these and we'll, we'll make some money. Whereas the types of products we're looking for, Amazon basics would not get involved because the volume wouldn't be there to make it interesting for them. So again, we do say in our program, Amazon Basics is not a big brand, but at the same time, it does give you a sense of if something is saturated whenever you see it. And even if the results are coming pretty low when you look at a certain product and you see Amazon Basics, that tells you just to research it a bit further. Just check into those keywords a bit more because you might be looking at something that's extremely saturated. My last one for today is the silicone baking mat. There was a time that these silicone type products went absolutely crazy on Amazon. And what happened was a whole bunch of people, they actually put these items on their hot list so that people will go ahead and buy them. And as you scroll down, you're seeing Amazon basics. So that's a little clue that it's it's pretty saturated. And as we scroll down, it's just an impossible thing. Like, would you do this one? Would you do this type of one? For, this is more of a pastry map. And again, we'll look at that in just a second. Would you do these? I mean, it goes on and on. So it's a very confused market. Also, the search results are bad. Also, we see Amazon basics are involved. So we are just looking at this and we're getting out straight away. The final big thing of the BSRs, look how low these are, 682, 596, 892. Uh, 47, I mean, that's that's crazy. And Amazon Basics product is flying. So you know these are a few checks that you can quickly do just to keep well away from these types of items. Because if you bring it in, how are you gonna get ranked? How are you gonna get in front of any of these items? Because you're selling a silicone baking mat. You would need to have some an unbelievably long tail keyword that enough people are searching for to be successful here. And the chances of that are absolutely tiny. So again, you might segue off of the silicone baking mat, try to find other types of items that are interesting down in that sponsored products related to the item section, but actually going ahead and selling these is a disaster and please do not do it. Please, please, please. If I ever see you selling a silicone baking mat, I'm gonna be extremely upset. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below other products that you are seeing that are also saturated and also give this video a like. It's really important you do that. It helps us get this in front of more people just like you. Also, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you click the button below right Right now and that little bell icon and finally 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 if you're not part of the marketplace superheroes movement there's a link down in the description or in the pinned comment it'll bring you back to our website and we will give you some free training to help you get your amazon business up and running from scratch that's it thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video